Wild Podcast. Give it up for the incredible Ken Reynolds. All right. Oh, you devils. Thank you. I've not done anything yet, so let's temper that. Come on, let's be real. All right, we'll just jump into it, right? That's what we... Uh, I'm the child of immigrants. Anyone here the child of immigrants? Yeah, get her, hurry. No, I'm just kidding. I was raised by English people in America. Even though my parents spoke the same language, I always had to translate for my mother. My, no my mother never really adopted American English. You know, she'd be like, cheerio. I'd be like, she's saying goodbye. <laughs> she'd be like, oh, I fancy a cup of cha. I'd be like, she's looking for tea. <laughs> she'd be like, tell them ta. I was like, she's saying thank you. She'd be like, I'm quite knackered. I'd be like, she's tired. She'd be like, I'm chuffed. I'd be like, she's happy. She'd be like, oh, I'm pissed. I'd be like, she's drunk. <laughs> she'd be like, pop, pop, on your bike, pops your fanny. I'd be like, she's saying, I'm actually, I don't know. Lay her down, something's wrong. Lay, lay, get her feet up, elevate her feet. She's falling. Put a stick in her mouth, goddammit! Mommy! It was always weird to me, though, to watch my parents, because my parents would talk like this, and we talk like this. And I was always like, that's weird. How did that happen? Because when you think about it, it was a bunch of British people that came to this country, right, to what I understand was unoccupied land, and they came... <laughs> I'm not sure how that's still a little controversial to us, but here it is, I guess, I don't know. The truth is, if you really think about it, the only thing white people who came to this country ever discovered were trusting people. But anyway, gobble, gobble, happy Thanksgiving. We're moving on. So, but we talk like this. They came here like, whoa, 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 and we talk like this. How did that happen? Well, I'm glad you asked. I was looking it up, and there is a theory that it was just a decision that they made that they just decided to do it. <laughs> Which is an amazing moment in history. One day, two old dusty white dudes are hanging out. One of them's just like, Winthrop, may I bend your ear for a moment? He's like, why yes, Phillips, what is it? He's like, well, I just had a thought on how we could further separate ourselves from the British if we desired to do so. He's like, well, of course we desired to do so. We made the big move. Uh, He's like, that well, what I was thinking? What if we were to just talk entirely differently? Like, talk entirely differently? Whatever do you mean? He goes, well, instead of talking like this is what we're all to do, I was just thinking, you know, what if we were to just, I don't know, you know? <laughs> talk like this. <laughs> Hello. And he goes, what have you done there? You've got the devil's tongue, shing. And he's like, no, no, it's still me, it's still me. He's like, oh, yes, yeah, shing. <laughs> I like that. We're Americans, we talk differently. When did you have time to come up with something this brilliant? He's like, well, I just made time in my schedule. Ah, yes, you mean schedule. No, I mean schedule. No, you mean shell. Oh, wow, okay, I, wow. <sighs> I see what you've done there. Now, don't hate it. Got anything else? He's like, well, I have one ball, but it is a bit drastic. And he goes, come on, mate, you're on a roll, out with it. He's like, well, if we really wanted to show that we are completely independent, completely different, what if we were to just fix our teeth? <laughs> and he's like, no, you've lost me. You've lost me. You pushed it there, you've lost me. You were doing so, well, what, what were you sharpen our tools with? You've not thought this through, you really. <laughs> and then they just went through the rest of the country. You know, they went down south, they're like, I'm tired of talking like this. I was thinking maybe we could go a little more in like this direction. What do y'all think? Maybe a little more like this, something like that. <laughs> Got to the Midwest, they're like, I'm tired of talking like this. I was thinking we could maybe change her up a little bit, like go in this direction, kind of hit that all, nice hit that all lot, you know? <laughs> Got to California, like, tired of doing it. Let's just go and let's, what if we were just a little more like, what the fuck, whoa. It's egregious, you know? <laughs> Not historically accurate, but it's fun. We like fun, right? It's fun. No, no, you don't. 
You know, they do think in times of Shakespeare that they didn't even sound English. They think they sounded more Bostonian. Yeah, which ruins Shakespeare right away, doesn't it? All those beautiful plays and sonnets coming out through that filter, no thank you. Just back then, people were like, come on, we're gonna go watch some Shakespeare in the pack. It's like, ugh, I feel sick. Go, oh my God, ugh, I feel like I got punched. Going to see it is just like, alas, poor Yorick, I knew this dude so good. Come on, kid, he's dead. That's his skull, it's fucked. It's like, Romeo, Romeo, where for art thou, Romeo? Seriously, where is this twat? This balcony's freezing, my nipples are so hard! <laughs> English people are sensitive about teeth jokes. They don't like them. I've learned that one. <laughs> my mother lives in England. I was there recently. We were just watching game shows, hanging out, and on one of the game shows, the question came on, on average, how many teeth is a British person missing? That was on a game show. Yeah. I was like, do all your game shows culturally indict you like that? That is like, say what you will about this country, we got problems, but our game shows are an escape, right? You're never watching a game show, it's like, on average, how many Oxycontin does a West Virginia, you know what I mean? It's like, it's a distraction, it's to distract us. The options, two, four, and seven, for how many teeth is a British person missing? <laughs> Miss, you can play the at-home version. Two, four, seven, how many teeth on average is a British person missing? You think four? She said seven. You're going with the most offensive one. Well, my dear, you'll be interested to know it was actually seven. She's right, it was seven, it's seven. It's obviously seven, it's obviously seven. She's right, come on. I wouldn't be doing the joke if it wasn't seven. Seven, seven, seven teeth from their heads, they're not sharks. That's a lot of teeth, everybody, okay? That is a quarter of your teeth, legally. Seven teeth, I was like, I could not believe it. I was like, seven teeth? My uncle was over, he's like, well, it's not that many if you think about it. I was like, that's a lot of teeth, dude. He goes, no, they pop out all the time. Oh, there goes one now, mate, dude. Another one bites the dust. Make a wish. And that's when I realized, England isn't a country. It's just a pile of teeth that people figured out how to grow potatoes in. <laughs> Together? How'd you meet? Uh, school. Why is that funny? She's like, school's crazy. <laughs> Why is that funny? Oh, we met in England. You met in England? <laughs> oh, interesting. All right. English people love the mass culture more than anyone. I'll tell you that. They're like, finally, nobody knows our secret. <laughs> Probably won't release that one. That will get me like, I can't go see my mother. I'll just be at my mother's like, they're gone. They're, no, they're not gone, they're not gone. How did you meet in England? You were at school in England? Yeah, I did study abroad. You studied abroad, okay. And you were there studying? I was, yeah. Okay. And then where? Sheffield. Sheffield. Okay. And then how did you, you met in school? What was the first, what's the first date in England? Go to the pub. Absolutely. Yeah, that's all you can do. <laughs> yeah. So, want a shag at mine or go to the pub? We've got two options. Let's do a shag at yours. <laughs> Great, that sounds good. Married? Yes. Yeah. Do you ever go back to Sheffield? No. No, of course not. Why would you? You're not English, are you? You are English. Ooh, this is super awkward all of a sudden, isn't it? I just picked up on your accent. You're like, yeah, 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 no. Oh, you fucking prick. And, and I love your answer that you don't go back. You're English. No, I don't go back, no. no. good for you. Made the right call. Mazel, mazel. I, um... I definitely find it strange being raised by English people in America. Like, immigrant parents raise you with sort of weird traditions, but the more I travel the country and talk to people, the more I realize it wasn't that my parents were immigrants, it's just parents. Parents just give you a bunch of, fill your head with weird shit, and then you become a grown-up, and then you're out there like, yeah, we used to do this, and people are like, what? <laughs> and you're like, yeah, my house has like a tradition, and they're like, that's not, that's like borderline abuse. You're like, it's not abuse, it's tradition, it's a tradition. 
This one guy, I was talking to him, and he was like, his family didn't celebrate any holidays, except for one that they celebrated twice a year. And you, like me, are probably like, what holidays twice a year? Well, you're not gonna figure it out. Because it in no way is a holiday. His family went big for daylight savings. <laughs> big day for them. They spent food out, they had drinks, people over revelry, it was an event. He was at school day of, like, y'all excited? It's Daylight's Eve. <laughs> Spring ahead, my favorite of the two bitches. I don't even know how that works. You gotta stay up till 2 a.m. You're having a good time, and then at two, you have it again, I guess? I'm not sure. Or then it's 4 a.m. and you feel like you just did blow with your family. You're like, what are we doing? This is not, this is weird, everybody. I had a woman at my show, she told me about how her and her sisters would always get their hair cut from their grandma all through their youth, which I thought was pretty sweet. It was like a family tradition. Then the grandmother passed away and they were cleaning out her place and they discovered that she'd kept all that hair, all of their childhood hair in a set of drawers she hid in the closet, or as I call it, the hairdresser. I love that one though. That's the best. I, I, that is the best. Dying with that le leave behind. You just have so, you're like, Grandma, why? She's like, bye bye, bye. You're like, why were you doing it? She's like, you might not figure it out, ta ta. She's like, what was the hair? Maybe I was putting it in pillows. You'll never know. I'm gone, I'm vapor. But my favorite one was I was at a show and I was like, anyone got any weird traditions? And this guy goes, I got one birthday chicken. I was like, sir, you talk until you're done. Get him a microphone. <laughs> what did you just say in a room of people? Birthday chicken? I was like, what is birthday chicken? And birthday chicken, it turns out, was in his family, they invented like a birthday Santa. The birthday chicken. <laughs> sort of this mythical, generous fowl whom he believed to be real. So every year on his birthday, he'd get gifts from his friends and family, but then he'd get one extra gift from the birthday chicken. <laughs> he thought it was totally normal, right? <laughs> then he gets a little bit older, goes through the reveal that we all went through. Granted, his was a little different than ours. <laughs> there was an addition. It was like, there's no tooth fairy, there's no Santa, there's no birthday chicken. He's like, I'm gonna need a minute. <laughs> Santa I saw coming, but birthday chicken? <laughs> Who is eating all the feed we put in the living room? <laughs> Dad? Oh my God. <laughs> then he gets a little bit older, he goes to high school, gets his license, goes to prom, goes to college. First semester, freshman year at college, in his dorm, it's his roommate's birthday. <laughs> and he's like, his parents live far away. They might not have time to get him a birthday chicken gift. I'll do it. Because what I failed to tell you is what they failed to tell him. That they were the only people that did it. See, he knew it was bullshit. He just didn't know that it was only his family's bullshit and that they'd invented the bullshit. That part never got revealed. So he's just handing this seeming stranger a gift with a card and this dude just opens it and he's like, love birthday chicken. <laughs> and that's you. <laughs> Thank you, birthday chicken. I love my sweater. <laughs> Anyone have anything like that you can think of, like little try? Granted, birthday chicken sets a high bar, obviously. <laughs> yeah, what do you got? My parents sent me a letter from Santa saying he wasn't gonna come visit anymore. What? <laughs> Fucking amazing. Oh my lord, dear Bradley, I hope this letter finds you well. It won't soon. You're still a nice boy, but I'm done with you. What? What did the letter say? 
was just like, it's time for us to part. <laughs> so your parents were like, your parents, your, first of all, I'm 90% one of your parents is a lawyer. They're like, legally, if we get this notarized, we're in the clear. We cannot, he cannot sue us in the future. So then you have the illusion that Santa's real, but he's just done with you specifically, <laughs> which is almost worse. Because kids are like, kids are like, what did Santa get you? And you're like, Santa and I aren't doing that anymore. <laughs> I've got a lead on a birthday chicken, which is actually... <laughs> That's great. It's just a lot of kids, and you're not one of my favorites. <laughs> Santa sent me a restraining order. Yeah, look, you were being an asshole to him. He said no more. Oh, man, now I want to have kids just to do that. That's like, I'm gonna burn my rubbers to be like, I'm gonna fuck with this kid, be like. Here's mine. This is my uh, family tradition. My family, when I was growing up, I'd go to England, they would make us share bath water. Yeah, yeah, that was like, I was raised to believe that was totally normal to share bath water with relatives. I can't explain it, you know? A lot of people won't take baths because they're like, oh, gross, that's your own filth, right? My own filth to me as a child would have been a dream. A dream. I'd look at a bath of my own filth the way a gruel-filled orphan would look through a rich person's foggy window at a Christmas goose. Just like, me own filth, gosh, someday, maybe. <laughs> Imagine, me own filth, you know. It's crazy. It would be like my aunts, my female cousins, they'd all share one bath, then they'd drain it, they'd do the great refilling, and then it was man time. And let me point out, this is PMS, pre-manscaping, a much bushier era, okay? And it would be like nine, 10 dudes, I'd be falling, grown ass men, I was a child. It, but I didn't think it was weird, it was the prison I was born into. But by the time it got to me, it didn't even look like bath water anymore. It just looked like ramen at that point. It was just like, ugh. Had the, it was the consistency of like cold sake by the time it got to me, you know what I mean? And then I just had to get in. I just had to d put myself into this human soup, this dude stew, this manastrone, this guy spacho. I'd go in there, a seven-year-old nubile boy, take a skunk dunk and come out of there covered in so many hairs of various lengths and curls, I'd look like a Grecian man at a nude beach, just like, let's do this, you know? Bonkers. My uncle would come over, he'd take the hair off me, give it to grandma, obviously. It was for her. It was, <laughs> herring is caring. Herring is caring. They did everything earlier in England. Like, they corrupted as youths much earlier in England. You'd see like an eight-year-old smoke, you'd be like, that's crazy. I'd be like, got a problem, coppa. You'd be like, I'm nine, so you need to pump the brakes over there, first of all. Sex was earlier. I remember I was 12 years old and my friend was like, mate, you still a virgin? I was like, yeah, I'm still a virgin. What are you, I'm 12 years old. He was like, don't worry, it'll happen. I was like, I don't want it to happen, okay? I am a little boy, all right? This, this is not chest hair. These are my uncle's pubes. I took a bath earlier. I'm not, I'm a kid, bro. Weed was earlier too. Weed, yeah, 12, 13 was when we started smoking weed there. The way we smoked weed there was different than how we smoked weed here, though. The way I learned to get high in England was through what they call rising blowbacks. Now, I know it sounds weird, but it's just when your buddy sucks your dick in a hot air balloon. That's all it is. It says, guys, it's European. It's like pastries for breakfast. It's just, it's their way. It is their way. No, what it is is someone takes a joint, right? Someone takes a couple hits off the joint, puts the lid end in their mouth, then <laughs> blows through the back. Then you suck that in. Then someone picks you up by your sternum until your feet are off the ground, lowering your oxygen levels. And by the time your feet hit the ground again, you are real high, real high. <laughs> so imagine the first time in the States when someone wanted to smoke with me. You know, like, you want to get baked? I was like, well, yeah, but we're going to need to get a few more fellas over here, Chad. I mean, <laughs> we'll hurt our backs. So one of the first times I got high, 
It's probably like first three times I got high. It was late at night, everything's closed, and we're hanging out in front of the store. And uh, I'm just laughing my ass off. We're having a good little time, you know? And I'm just laughing. I tap the store window. Nothing aggressive, just give it a little tap. And my friend Richard goes, Don't, Gareth, you lima guaf. <laughs> and I go, Don't call me a lima guaf. <laughs> and everybody laughed. But they didn't laugh when he said it. They laughed when I said it. And I wanted to know what was going on, but I couldn't ask because I was high. So I was just like, Haha, yeah, you don't call me a lima guaf. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> But I wish I'd asked. Because it became like a nickname. People started calling me Lima Guaf. Yeah, for years. People, you know, I'd get into the town, people would be like, hey, Lima Guaf's here. I'd be like, you're damn right I am. That's me. I'm him. They'd be like, you all right, Lima Guaf? I'd be like, doing good. A little confused still, but good. Lima Guaf's good. Years went on. Till one night, I was at a party. And my cousin introduces me to a guy who was there that night. And he goes, no, no, I remember you, you're Lama I was like, yeah. So then I waited until I had a moment and I cornered him. I had to know. And I go, hey, why was that so funny? He goes, what well, was what funny, Lama I said, why was it so funny when I said, don't call me a Lama He said, well, because you hit the shop window and Richard said, don't Gareth, the alarm will go off. And <laughs> And you said, don't call me a lima guaf. I was like, <laughs> well, that is funny. Now that I hear it back, that's pretty good, honestly. That's <laughs> pretty good weed, too. <laughs> well, good to catch up. Hope you're well. Lima guaf out. I'll see you. Thank you. <laughs> Together? Yeah. How'd you meet? Tinder, nice. How long you been together? Four years. Four fucking A, that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. About half the room cares. She's excited. Anyone got a weird way of met? Who's, who's, uh, who's a couple who's got a weird way? What do you got back there? Go ahead. Um, we met at a festival in Eastern Oregon, like a small, less than 2,000 people festival, serving bar at Clown Night with Clown Noses on. You met at Clown Night? Yeah, okay, relax. Quit acting like I'm the crazy one. Like, yeah, I always said that. Clown night, dumbass. We met at clown night. And then you have noses on at clown night? Yeah. Yeah, yeah duh. <laughs> what, I, I, what you think makes it clown night, stupid man? Can you imagine walking into a clown bar? I don't know if there's like, I would make a U-turn so fast. I'd be like, we need to get the fuck out of here. They'd be like, trivia night? Worse, run, run, run. Start that car. People loved you? Yeah, well, lots of people think that and they're wrong. That happens all the time. People loved us, we were loud. How long, how long ago was that? No, sir, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm far, but I'm not like in another city. <laughs> yes. A trained actor. Three years! Three years next March! You are a clown? You're still a clown? Huh? You got it on now? It took a second. I had to get the bar through it. I'm sorry. You had to get the bar through it? Is it like a barbell for your nose? Is this like a Saw movie? <laughs> oh, my Lord. You, I mean, this is like feeding an animal that won't leave you alone. This is like, we're like, all right, go, go, go. Get the fuck out of here. I put out milk one night. I'm not your daddy. I don't, you know, I have a cat. I can't have more. We can't have more than one clown in this room, and I'm the clown. I mean, sir, I almost want you to keep going so I can actually shout at one of my shows. Get that clown the fuck out of here. <laughs> Toss the clown. <laughs> All right, uh, let's talk about weed. We'll talk about weed a little bit more. I, uh... I'm glad they legalized weed. I think all drugs should be legal. I really do. Weed is a good example, right? They tried to scare us about legalizing weed. And then, uh, you know, they did, right? Like, le leading up to the legalization of weed, they're like, you cannot legalize weed. It'll be, <laughs> it's gonna be chaos. 
The streets will be filled with snack zombies looking for things to eat. It's going to be total madness. They'll be after our, our Twizzlers, our, our Snickers, our, our Sour Patches, our peanut butter filled pretzels, our cheese balls, our brittle uh, Rolos. It's going to be, they'll be breaking windows. Our 7-Elevens are going to look like 9-Elevens. You can't do this. And then we did it, and uh, it was fun. Right, pretty much, went fine. The only thing that's changed is there's been a spike in canceling plans. A lot more plans get canceled now. I don't know what it is about getting high with plans. It's like, I'll have plans. I'll be excited that I have plans. Then it'll be the night of the plans, and I'll get high, and I'll be like, what was I thinking? I gotta cancel these plans. I'm an idiot. I can't go anywhere. <laughs> Gotta lie to your best friend, you know? Like a stone Jesse Smollett. You're like, there was two of them. They came after me. It was pretty bad. I can't. <laughs> MAGA hats, the whole nine. It was. Yeah, I could probably do coffee tomorrow before I get high. That's what the doctor says once I get out. I like that medical phase. That felt right to me. The medical phase, right? That was awesome. Oh, <laughs> we were kids. They still have that in some states. Isn't that funny? That's where you had to pretend to be sick and go see someone pretending to be a doctor. It's fun. It's like marijuana LARPing. It's pot cosplay, right? I just kept saying medically speaking a bunch during mine. She's like, why do you need the license? I was like, well, medically speaking. Whoa, that's a pretty good start from this guy. I need it because without it, medically speaking, I can't, uh, I can't uh, get high without it, medically speaking. It's, it's genetic, my dad had it. Please help me, please help fix me, please fix me. I knew it was a bit of a farce when I asked them if I could take my license picture in a top hat and they were like, we literally don't care. I was like, okay. I walked out of there, I was like, have a good day, gentlemen. I'm off to get rip shit, yes. I looked for that license for a long time, and then I found it like two weeks ago. Can you validate that that is a man in a top hat? That is a legal. I should point out too, I'm wearing a tuxedo shirt, and not like a shirt that you'd put a tie around, the print of a tuxedo on a t-shirt. They were like, that guy doesn't need more weed. I was like, yeah, doop do I will say I've enjoyed watching the evolution of getting weed in my lifetime. I certainly, I've been smoking weed long enough to have really seen it evolve, you know? Like I think back to when I had to get weed in high school. Yeah, impossible. It was easier to get rare ivory than to get a bag of pot. It was a weird system. You had to go hang out with a dude. That was how you got it. You kind of like had to earn it by hanging out with some weird dude. Some dude who knew a dude, but you'd have to physically be in his apartment. That was how you got it, you know? He just would have like a fish tank full of baby sharks. He'd be bench pressing in his living room while he was telling you video game high scores. You'd be like, you think you're gonna get it today? He'd be like, won't be today, no. Could be days, could be weeks. You're like, do you wanna just call me when it gets here? He's like, Haha, that sounds crazy, no. I'll see you tomorrow. You're like, okay. To when I moved to Los Angeles, I still had to go meet a dude. It was a little easier. The timeline was a little more condensed, but I still had to go meet some random dude. He'd be like, meet me in this parking lot at 4.30. I'd be like, can do. It'd be like 7.45, I'd be like, are you close? He'd be like, no. I'd be like, okay, thank you. It's been a pleasure to work with you. I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> to now, when it's just so easy to get it, Right? Like back then, you'd go meet that dude. You didn't know what kind of weed you were getting. There were no types of weed. I didn't know what kind of weed this guy was giving me. There was one kind of weed, the weed he gave you. That was it. <laughs> Isn't that crazy to think of that now? That should be like, imagine walking into a bar and being like, one alcohol, please. Like, that's what we were doing. And now I really do feel like we've almost overcorrected. Like, it's easier to get weed now than it is to get quarters for laundry. (laughs) 
It's become so serious now. Like you walk into the weed store, they're like, all right, and your blood type and star sign? You're like, no, no, I just, please, weed. Sometimes you're in line behind the people who take it real seriously. They get that magnifying broadhouse that has a light switch on it, you know? They'll just be like, oh man, yeah, that's great. Look at those purple hairs, that's awesome. What county is this from? Loving the crystals. I always feel like I gotta play that part when I get up there, you know? I'll be like, wow, look at those crystals. They're like, sir, that's the tip jar. I'm like, yeah, but it's still very shiny. That's awesome. There's a lot of quarters in there, which is good for you all. Could I actually grab some of those? I'm doing laundry later. I'm having trouble locating some quarters for myself personally as of late. Doesn't matter where you stand on weed, everyone is taking gummies. Smokers, non-smokers, everybody's rocking gummies. People love the gummies. Evangelical preachers will be like, marijuana is a narcotic. You may not, but you can have a gummy. You can take a gummy. I take a gummy before I walk the dog. Makes it more interesting. It's in Leviticus. You can. You may. You know who's really rocking the gummies? Senior citizens. We got them. We got them. Candy. That was how we got them. Sitting right there. So obvious. Candy. Senior citizens love gummies. I was at a show talking about gummies. 85-year-old woman at my show goes, I used to take gummies. I was like, used to? She goes, I'd always take a half. I was like, okay. She goes, then one day I took a whole. I was like, uh-oh. She goes, uh-oh's right. <laughs> Called 911. I was like, what? What did you tell them? She goes, I told them I took a gummy. They knew what to do. They knew what to do. It's that common that they know what to do. There's probably like a tented triage attached to most hospitals now. Senior citizens sprawled out on gurneys having just OG'd over gummied. Some exhausted doctor running around there like, get me 15 insurers, all the soft fudge you can find it. For God's sake, put mash on. I'm on a break from weed. I took a break from weed. I've just smoked enough weed in my lifetime that I'm like good for a while, you know? I love weed. I love weed. I'm the guy who before the show tonight, you'd all be waiting to come inside, but you'd have to wait for me because I'd be outside hitting the bowl like a crack pipe. And you'd just be like, how high do you need to be for this? And I'd be like, I'm not getting high for now. I'm getting high for two hours from now, okay? Like how a camel drinks a bunch of water before it goes into the desert. I'm filling my weed humps. There are some things I like about not smoking weed, for sure. Like, I like walking into a room and knowing why. That's addictive. <laughs> that is addictive, I'll be honest. They were right about that one. <laughs> or like remembering where I parked my car in a parking garage. That's good, I like that one too. Every movie I ever saw, I'd always walk out and be like, <laughs> oh right, <laughs> this part. Walk around for five minutes, eventually flag down the security guard, get in their cart, you know? Just be like, make and model, <laughs> sir, I'm not sure. I might not have even driven here tonight. This might be a fool's errand. <laughs> you smoke? No, all right. <laughs> the only time I would take breaks other than this last one would be when I would go see my mother in England. She wouldn't score me weed, she was real square, you know? <laughs> So last time I went there, I took CBD with me. You know, a lot of people are like, CBD doesn't work, you don't feel anything. That's not true. You take enough CBD, you feel like you really wish you had weed. You are like, oh, that'd be great. Weed would be great. My mother, she saw that I had CBD. She goes, got any more? Like it was a quaalude at Studio 54. I was like, lady, I can literally buy this at the grocery store. So I gave her one, 
right? And I'm not kidding. You could give this CBD to a gerbil, there'd be no noticeable difference. <laughs> My mother tripped, tripped. She was fried like an egg. She was laying out on her couch, just like, oh my God. I go, are you okay? She goes, the colors are so vivid. I was like, this is a white room. <laughs> but she couldn't hear me. I just looked in her eyes and all she was hearing was <laughs> Same trip though, right? Right before I'm flying back, my cousin gives me a weed edible that he made for me. Now that is a dicey situation. I want to know the potency, always, right? My rule with edibles is you can always take more, never less, right? Chew, chew, wait, like a delayed Amtrak. That's how I handle it. <laughs> but this is for a flight, international travel. So you got to make a decision before you go into customs how much you want to eat. Because you can't have it on you in your pocket, but you can't have it in you inside God's pocket. So I gotta decide. So I'm like, fuck it, let's go big. So I eat the whole thing. Oopsie poopsie. Yeah, it was, a, it was a bad call, no doubt. Bad call. I made the wrong call. I got the highest I've ever been. The highest I've ever been. I was so high that I didn't know I was high. Like, I crossed through the event horizon. I was that high. And I know a lot of people who even smoke weed are like, what does that mean? I wouldn't know what it means unless it happened to me. But I got so high that I needed to figure out that I was high. And there were a few red flags on the way to the moment of revelation. The first one was I was sitting on the plane and I couldn't find my phone. Anywhere. I was checking every, I tore my bag apart, I was looking under my seat, you know, and then eventually found it in my pocket. And I was just like, wait, how? it was like I did a magic trick on myself. I was like, how did I do that? <laughs> that was my phone, yeah. <laughs> the second red flag was I was sitting there and I became obsessed with the idea of taking off my boxer shorts and only wearing my pants. <laughs> The idea of this consumed me. I was obsessed. It was either think about it the whole flight or do it. So I had to go do it. So I got up, went to the plane bathroom, went inside there, joined a different mile high club, okay? Now what went on in there can only be described as a slapstick silent film comedy. There should have been a piano player outside like, so I had like egads popping up and stuff like that. I was banging around in there, giggling my ass off, knocking shit down. I was like, oh my God, this ain't going too well, you know? But eventually got them off, right? Had the boxers, didn't really know what to do with them. So I just sort of jammed them in my pant pocket. Like I had a clown hanky, you know? Hanky to some of us. All right, sir. Wait, remember. Get that clown the fuck out of here. I'm kidding. He may stay. He's in a party of 30. They all get in his car. All right, come on, guys. Let's go. 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 Had that clown hanky out of my pants. My plan was if anyone asked me what it was, I was just gonna go, got a bit of a runny nose. I go, blah, blah, blah. Oh. <laughs> but that wasn't it. Where I realized was I was sitting there, okay, and I'm watching a movie, and as I'm watching a movie, I'm like, the worst part about the mask is how much it fogs up your glasses. Then I'm like, you're not wearing glasses. <laughs> you don't wear glasses. <laughs> then I started thinking back. I was like, my phone. The clown hanky. Oh my God, I'm high. <laughs> I was so high that I've been on a lot of planes, but I was so high on this flight that I was looking out the window like, we're so high right now. <laughs> We'd already landed, by the way. I was like, oh my God, the people look like people from up here, man. 
the flight attendant came over. She said something to me. I couldn't understand her though. All I heard was I, uh, I was trying to get weed in Mexico once. Not easy, right? I was searching all over. Eventually, I bought it off a cab driver. I should have known it was not good weed when I got it in a garbage bag. I was like, this is probably not going to be great weed. It wasn't. It was terrible, right? But I was like, there were like seeds and stems in it. I was like, oh, yeah, those things. <laughs> right. But so I rolled a bunch of joints. I was smoking them. I was smoking them in my hotel room down at the beach. I was walking down the street, smoking joints, maybe getting a little too comfortable, right? And at one point, I'm walking by, and I see this, like, little discotheque. And I'm like, oh, maybe I'll go in there, you know? I was like, look at those lights. That's pretty cool, you know? And then I'm like, oh, wait, it's like a barber shop. Why does a barber shop have, like, disco lights? And then I'm like, oh, wait, those aren't even disco lights. Those are, like, sirens. And I'm like, oh, wait, those aren't even coming from inside. They're actually a reflection. I'm like, oh, wait, reflections means it behind you. And I was like, oh, wait, those are cops. I was like, oh, wait, I have weed. And and I just threw it like four feet from me. And then the cops came over, you know, they found it. They were pretty good detectives, obviously. They're <laughs> thorough. And um, so they cuffed me, put me in the back of the cop car, right? Driving me away. Now the one guy, his job is to just drive. But the other guy, his job is to just disparage the quality of the weed to my face. So he's just holding the bag up, and he's like, man, this is some bad weed. I was like, yeah, it has not been good to me. I agree, it's not great. He's like, this is, I can't believe you're going to jail for this oregano. I was like, yeah, no, it's not good. I'm not proud of it. It really is not worth it in any way, you know? He was just like, what did you pay for these long clippings? I was like, sir, I feel like whatever I say to you, you're gonna overreact because that seems to be your attitude, but $40. He goes, $40? I was like, I knew that that was what you do. Then at one point they pull over and he goes, look, we don't want to take you to jail. And I was like, well, sir, we finally have some common ground because you're not going to believe this. I don't want to go to jail. So look at us. He goes, if you go to that ATM and get out $200, we'll let you go. I was like, that's can do. So I went, I got $200 out of the ATM, gave it to him, right? They let me go. As I was walking away, he goes, hey, you forgot something. And he threw the weed at me. And as I was picking it up, I thought, this is a better judicial system. <laughs> I just got arrested, interrogated, processed, had my hearing, posted bail, got released, and my shit back in 45 minutes. We should be doing that, honestly. <laughs> Way better. Are you waving to me? Oh, you, that's a thumbs up. Oh. You gotta understand, people were clapping and you're like, giving me the queen wave. <laughs> I was like, what? That's, a better, that's better than clapping. I want that, more people to do that. Yeah, that's good. Are you here with someone I can't really see? Uh, three other people. Three other people, okay. How do you all know each other? Uh, two of us are friends and one I haven't seen in like uh, 10 years. And this is the first time you're seeing each other 10 years at this show? Yeah. How did this happen? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Anyone taking some gummies over yonder? <laughs> she might just be an apparition. My friend from 10 years ago is here. The word is part is she's passed away. <laughs> so did you arrange to see each other? She arranged to see you. The one I haven't seen in 10 years. How did you see the one you haven't seen in 10 years? Did you decide you were going to come to this together? It was her idea, and here we are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't know who I am. You were like, we'll do this. <laughs> right, okay. All right, all right. That's great. What do you think so far? Are you having a good time? Okay, yeah, I saw you having a good time because you waved at me, so I know you're... That's how I could tell. You were like, hello! <laughs> All right, now we're going to talk about the rest. This is just uh, this is a bit of a hodgepodge of potpourri. 
of other stuff. So uh, I'm a single man. I uh, lived with a female friend of mine for the past couple years. It was fine, obviously. It's been a while since I lived with a woman. There were certain things I forgot. Like, I always consider women to be cleaner than men. And I think for the most part, that is true, right? Tidier, at least. But I will say, the bathroom is where that playing field gets real level. <laughs> That's where women come to life, right? Like, there's a lot of stuff I was just like, what is going on? Like, there were always fingerprints on the mirror, which I was like, as a man, I've never touched the mirror. I don't even know how that happens. She's just in there like, someday. <laughs> Women also get very ambitious with that bathroom trash can. Yeah, you do. You believe in that thing. To me, it's a baby trash. I do not have high expectations for this receptacle. Q-tips, floss, that's it. Empty it once a year. Kind of a big deal when you empty it, right? It's like a ceremony. You're like, come on, we're emptying baby, get your sister, we're emptying baby trash out back. Gather round, you know? You're like, baby trash had a good year, fine year, baby trash had, huh? Good harvest, I think, right? We can use the same CVS bag for another year, I think, right? It's got that little hole in it. It's not that women fill it, it's that you pack it in like sand. What is the long-term strategy here? Just like live to fight another day, Brenda. Ah, uh, smush! You work for me! I just walked in there one day, its lid wouldn't even close. I was like, what are you doing to baby trash? You're killing baby trash. Looked like it had been curb stomped. I was like, look at him, look at him. I eventually had to empty it, was not easy to do. It's concreted in there. Had to put on like a weightlifting belt, have a buddy come over to spot me. I was shaking, 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 right? It's like giving a nerd a swirly. I was like, drop, drop, drop. When it finally dropped, it was like a magician's pocket. I couldn't believe all the stuff that was in there. Nail polish, people magazines. I was like, is that a bottle of red wine? What the fuck are you doing in here? This is a bathroom. This is a bathroom. A lot of hair too, a lot of hair, yeah. Seems like a nightmare, but it is a lot of hair. You ever get a hair caught in your hand you can't get off? Yeah, hair caught in your hand you can't get off, right? You just work on it for 10 minutes, like get off of there, you know? Finally you do it, and then you're rubbing your fingers together, 30 seconds later you're like, that bastard. It's still there, won't leave. Women have come up with an amazing technique for when that happens to them in the shower to get rid of that hair. <laughs> Haven't you? Yes, you, you already know. You already know. Women ain't got time for that. They're in the shower, they got stuff to shave. Women ain't got time for that, so they'll just take those finger hairs and just strewn them along the shower tile. Hair by hair, strand by strand, one by one, lock by lock sort of decking the halls in there. It's got a festive nature to it. Over the months it takes on the appearance of jungle vines in some parts. One day I just looked over, I was like, what the fuck is going on over here? What? Some of the side hairs almost look like, like bad cursive. It's like a dead language. Looks like cave paintings from a far gone culture. I'm just like, she'd look at this. She, I need the Rosetta Stone. She's trying to tell me something. She's communicating through hair. It's like hieroglyphics. <laughs> I eventually had to get rid of it. Came up with a technique I call the dick sprinkler. I'd just be in the shower one day and I'd be like, all right, fuck it. And I'd just fill my palm with water and be like, got it, got it, got it. Got it, you know? Those hairs would drop down, right? Then eventually the shower drain clogs. That was the next chapter. <laughs> Suddenly the water's at calf level whenever you're taking a shower. You're not taking a shower anymore. You're taking what can only be described as a shaft, you know? 
stomping around in there furiously like the grape stomping lady. You're like, God damn it, this isn't a life. I'm gonna get trench foot. This is bullshit. I had to unclog it, you know? She came in, she's like, what do you think it was? I was like, I don't know, maybe it's this treasure troll of you that lives down there, think it might be that? It just blinked, huh? It said mama, right? I throw it in the baby trash, but there's no fucking room. All right, let's talk about America. Uh, land that I love, land that I love, land that I'm a little concerned about, I'm not gonna lie. Let me start by saying this. I have stopped flying. I don't fly to shows anymore, not because of the edible boxer short thing. That's, that's irrelevant. Other reasons. I stopped flying 